This training video was developed by the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading in the UK and is part of a range of resources aimed at researchers. This particular video uh, looks at data entry into an Excel worksheet that has been pre-prepared with column headers, validation rules, etc. In this exercise, you will enter data into an Excel file that has been set up with validation rules and column headers. This video demonstrates entry of a single questionnaire. Take a copy of the file data entry spreadsheet and rename the copy as a baseline fe underscore hash underscore your name, where hash is 1 if you are entering questionnaires 1 to 10, 2 if questionnaires 11 to 20, or 3 if questionnaires 21 to 30. We will demonstrate entering questionnaire 1, so we'll call the file baseline fe underscore 1 underscore Kathy. When we open the file, we notice that there are three worksheets in the file. Household, which is for the household level data, activities for the activity level data, and codes, which contain the labels for the numeric codes used in the data. For all of the coded questions, uh, validation rules have been set up to restrict data entry to valid codes. We have also set a range of values for the village code and the household ID. We have included input messages, so information about the type of data expected is displayed. You will also notice that we cannot move into the header rows on the worksheet. These rows have been locked to prevent them from being accidentally modified or deleted. These features help to ensure better quality data. We enter the data row by row, each row representing a household. For the coded questions, we enter the numeric codes. One for male, three for middle-aged. We have the code labels in the separate sheet so we can easily interpret the data. When we come to the sources of income, there are four columns here. One for each of the possible sources. We need four columns as this is a multiple response question and a household could choose all four options. The sheet has been set up to expect a one to represent a tick in the checkbox and a zero otherwise. This particular household has just one source of income which is salary. When we come to the income cells, we would only expect income from sources that have previously been chosen. Uh, the sheet does not include automatic skips, though these could possibly be programmed with the use of advanced features such as macros. But we have included conditional formatting. Thus, when we enter a one for a source of income, the corresponding cell changes colour. Thus, for the income cells, you should only be entering values into the blue cells. The only source of income for this first household is salary, and only the salary income cell is blue. This sheet does not prevent you from entering data into the wrong cell, but the coloured background shows you where you should be entering data and acts as a visual clue. When we come to the economic activities, we need to move to the separate sheet. We must remember to enter the village code and the household number, as without this we would not be able to link the activities to the relevant household. We enter one row per activity. An extra feature on this sheet is a column to display the activity associated with the codes. So for example we enter 24 as the activity code and we find that sewing and knitting gets displayed as the text. This feature uses the Excel 
VLOOKUP function to pick up the labels from the code sheet. Thus we can easily uh, check the coding during data entry and any mistakes can be identified and dealt with straight away. For the household member columns, we enter one for a tick and zero otherwise, just as we did for the checkboxes in sources of income. Don't forget to repeat the village code and household number for each activity. Continue until you have entered all the data for 10 questionnaires and remember to save the file. In your team, discuss this method of data entry. Be prepared to provide feedback to the other teams.